Okay. I'd like to do a two-part video series on weight. Obviously, we're talking about weight and gravity. Gravity is not an autonomous field modality. It's nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. So first we have to work our way backwards to things that humanity doesn't understand. Now I said you can go on to any website, multi-million dollar company. They have frequently asked question pages and every one of those places, multi-million dollar companies that uh, makes magnets, most of them are in China, say, how does a magnet work? They'll say, we have no idea. What? You're one of the largest companies in the world that makes magnets. You don't know how magnet. No, nobody does. No. Instantaneous action at a distance, exactly how a magnet works, I have no idea. Descriptions are not explanations. Really, really important point. What do we think we know about weight? Well, you know, if you stand uh, on a scale, you weigh a certain amount. Put this candle on here, it weighs four ounces. There we go, that's weight. Well, we know if we actually move to different places on the Earth, the same object will have a variance. Well, that's due to the fact that the Earth is not exactly spherical. It's uh, bulged at the equator. Weight is not location uh, specific only, meaning on the Earth. Weight is also location specific and relative to what is being weighed. Weight has absolutely no meaning. So when we talk about gravity, first we're going to actually have to define magnetism. We're going to have to define fuel coherency. We're going to have to define charge. But then we're going to understand that weight is certainly nothing that has any specific parameter since weight is location specific. Weight is medium specific. Obviously a fat guy floating in the water doesn't weigh that much, does he? Weight is vector specific. Weight is magnitude specific. Weight is phase specific. I've only named off five of the seven things that actually define weight. Location, medium, vector, magnitude, and phase. Well, what does that mean? Okay, what do you think you understand about weight? Here I have a one inch cube neodymium iron boron magnet, right? Right, sure I do. Okay, now let's find out how much it weighs. First we're going to use the candle here. So, it weighs about four ounces. Actually to get the magnet away from this metal top, which of course it will accelerate towards. Okay, and by the way, magnetic acceleration, what you call magnetic attraction, is absolutely 100% no different than that which we call gravity. The only difference is this. F. Let's see, field coherency. You kind of know the difference between a laser and a light bulb? You know, <clears throat> most people read by a 60 watt light bulb. Right? 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 Okay. Do you know exactly how powerful a 60 watt laser is? Any idea? 60 watt laser? It'll cut through your car just like a hot knife cutting through butter. 60 watt light bulb? You can look at it for quite a long time. Actually, I'm staring at a hundred and twenty volt tube right now you know I sit there and stare at it for quite a long time if I were to stare at a hundred and twenty watt laser it would burn a hole through the back of my skull like that okay you understand what field coherency is now so now we're gonna weigh this magnet all I have to do is subtract the four ounces of the candle from the weight of the magnet right Sure, easy enough if it doesn't slide off the waxy surface here. It wants to turn. The reason why it's turning, by the way, is because the waxy surface of the candle, it's actually turning to the Earth's magnetic polarity. Actually, it's not wanting to slide off. It's actually wanting to align itself. That's actually a trick I showed you in another video. So right now we have 8.4 ounces. So if we subtract the 4 ounces from the candle, from the weight of the magnet, we're left with the magnet weighs... 4.4 ounces, or you just say it weighs 4 ounces, right? Basically. Okay. Here's our magnet. By the way, I've marked the plane of inertia on this magnet, the dielectric inertial plane. You see there, you can see it right underneath the magnetic viewing film. Right? Sure you can. I can see one pole here. I can see this bright line along the middle, and I can see another pole right there. You see it? It's very readily visible. Plane of inertia, right? At the center of any field modality, you would think it'd be the strongest, right? At the center of gravity, there is no gravity. The center of a really powerful magnet, right here, there is no magnetism, right? So, the acceleration of like a four ounce candle over here, okay? Incoherent mass, 
And what does incoherent mass mean? Okay, we have a coherent mass over here. That would be our magnet, right? Incoherent, coherent. Light bulb. People keep asking me to dumb down my videos. It's like, I keep going, you're kidding, right? I already dumbed them down to a level that seems unimaginable to me. You know, dumb them down a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Light bulb. Incoherent matter, right? It's four ounces. This is 4.4. .4. Let's call it four ounces, right? Coherent matter. Incoherent matter. Light bulb. Laser, right? What's the difference? Everything in future technology. By the way, gyroscope is coherency. It's coherency of a spinning mass, too, by the way. You don't think of that as a coherent entity. We actually take a mass. You spin it up where it's all moving in the same force vector. Even a gyroscope is a co... It's different, however. It's not uh, coherency at the atomic level. It is the coherency of force vector in the flywheel, but that's a point for another discussion. So right now, this um, candle has an acceleration has a weight of four ounces, okay? Weight is location specific, medium specific, vector specific, magnitude specific, phase specific, and two other things which are really complicated I can't get into right now. I will later. That pop your brain. We're gonna talk about weight next in the next video, okay? We will define weight, what we think we understand about weight. So, four ounces of acceleration here. Oh, but look, let's look over here. What the hell are we looking at over here? Hmm, 60 pounds of acceleration, well not towards the earth, it still weighs four ounces if you actually drop it on the dirt, that's right. Depends on what is able to become coherent. We still have, regardless, basically a four ounce magnet. You, know, you drop it on the dirt, and it's gonna weigh four ounces, right? Yes and no. Depends on what it is we're weighing it against. The only way this has 60 pounds of a currency, 60 pounds of acceleration, it's able to actually lift 60 pounds, and that's against 1g of gravitational acceleration. So that's 60 pounds against 1g of acceleration. Okay, okay. Obviously, that depends. A sheet of metal like this. <laughs> oh my god. Uh... <laughs> 60 pounds. 60 pounds. That's metal. So, what's the difference between dirt? What's the difference between cauliflower? A head of cabbage, this metal top, or this magnet over here. Obviously, it's the other object has to become coherent as well. You know how you could actually stroke a nail with a magnet and it will have a coherent field. Okay, so what is field coherency? Well, that's also explained too. Now this is about the same mass, except this is a ferrite magnet. Everything in the universe is this, by the way. E. Electrical. Period. Undeniable, irrefutable. If anybody ignorantly thinks that there are four different types of field modalities, oh, you know, we got dielectricity, we got electricity, we got magnetism, and we got gravity. No, we don't. Electricity is phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Magnetism is the loss of inertia defined as force in motion. Dielectricity is longitudinal. Magnetism is toroidal. It is centrifugal, going outwards, force in motion, toroidal. Gravity is incoherent dielectric acceleration. Gravity is not an autonomous field modality. Now, anyway, everything is electrical. So then we're going to get into discussing mass, how you can actually counteract mass since everything is electrical. What defines field coherency? Got the magnet here. Oh my god. <coughs> Got the candle here. Atomic, right? Okay, we have geomagnetic precession of the various molecules. Of course, the candle is not one simple type of atom. It's an arrangement of molecules comprised up of a various atomic makeup, paraffin, so on and so forth. Everything is incoherent, just like a light bulb right over here. Incoherent, right? Over here, the hexagonal lattice nature of a neodymium iron boron is such that, I'm just pointing this in an arbitrary direction, and it always exists in a geomagnetic precession ratio which, by the way, is a golden ratio. This would be the geomagnetic precession, which exists at a rate of phi, excuse me, phi, one, and one, right here. This is geomagnetic precession. This is also known as a Lamore frequency. I went to the Lamore frequency is necessary for uh, magnetic resonance, uh, magnet magnetic resonance imaging machines to work properly. Okay. Here we have a coherent mass. 
This is point non -spin and here we have the plane of inertia. You remember the plane of inertia that I showed you? Right here. There's no magnetism right here. As I told you before, you could actually cut a magnet a thousand million times if you could actually cut it that thin. This is actually a chrome-plated... Ow. A chrome-plated <laughs> neodymium iron boron ceramic slug that's been magnetized. Also, charge has been induced. There's a few different ways to create a coherent field. You could use another magnet to create it, which is temporary. Depends on the type of material. It could be samarium cobalt. It could be a ferrite. It could be a neodymium iron boron. Now, this basically weighs four ounces, too. This is like a speaker magnet. Four ounces. Now, the amount of coherent dielectric acceleration that exists within this is about 15 pounds, plus or minus, of acceleration over 1 G of gravity. In other words, it's able to lift about 15 pounds. Why is that? Everything is electrical. The amount of field coherency, this is actually how you would define a black hole as well, if I were to extrapolate this out further, because everything is about acceleration, everything is electrical. Imagine a material that uh, was able to take such an immense charge that it would collapse in on itself and disappear from the visible universe. If we actually had a material like that, that's what we could actually do. If we induce a strong enough electrical charge, we can make it so coherent that its acceleration vector would actually overcome its own ability to maintain a mass or a magnitude. Obviously, that sort of material does not exist. However, theoretically, it certainly is absolutely and undeniably possible. Here we have the plane of inertia. What is incommensurability? Point nonspecific. I don't know if you know much about holography, but if you take a large hologram like this, okay, and there's a, a picture of Uncle Joe and the hologram right here. Here's the hologram. If you actually cut out a little piece of the hologram way the hell down here, you see this shit? Now Uncle Joe is right here in the hol. I got a lot of hardcore professional, huge holograms. If you cut out just this little piece down here, say a little postage stamp of, uh, from the picture of Uncle Joe right here waving at you in the hologram, you can actually put laser light through this little tiny piece and you'll see the entire hologram of Joe again. In other words, in every little subsection of a hologram, exists the entire frigging image. There's actually been a recent invention by a buddy of mine that has near infinite redundancy. In other words, if you're able to disrupt 99% of the signal, 100% of the signal would remain, and it's a vortex data transmission invention, 100% of the signal would remain within the remainder 1% that was not disrupted. And the military applications are endless. There'd be no issues anymore of signal degradation. That's our future, by the way. Zero signal degradation? Are you kidding me? That's the stuff of Star Trek. Incommensurability is actually something that the ancient Greeks and Pythagoreans defined a really, really long time ago. It was such a huge secret that uh, one person who actually spread what the secret of incommensurability was was supposedly taken out on a lake and drowned. He was murdered. Pythagoreans. These are the people that are peacemongers, non-violent, but someone let loose what incommensurability was, and he was murdered. Here you see incommensurability. I said if you cut this magnet up a million billion times, if you're able to, like a hunk of salami, each little slice would have its own north pole, its own south pole. Magnet doesn't actually have polarity. It has the inverse of counter space. The reason for that is because human beings draw a line like this. Okay? This is us stupid human beings. That's how human beings draw a line. Mother Nature draws a line like this. Now, I can't do both lines at the same time, but imagine me drawing the other side at the same time. This is Mother Nature's line. That's the only way lines work in nature is like this. This is how humans draw a line, and this is how Mother Nature draws a line. Magnet doesn't have polarity. It has the inverse of counter space, the inverse of an acceleration. Inverse of centripetal, uh, uh, nonlinear, trans-Euclidean counterspace. Counterspace is a really, really old concept, too. It dates back to the ancient Egyptians, the, the uh, false door. It dates back to the ancient Egyptians. It dates back to the ancient uh, Indians. They didn't apply it to field theory, but they understood fully what counterspace was. And I love, love the jokes that people give me about counterspace. They're talking about kitchen counterspace. I love those jokes especially. I actually don't love them. 
they are kind of funny. So what's the difference between this ferrite, which is basically four ounces, and this neodymium iron boron, which is basically four ounces? And this one's able to pick up 60 pounds. This one's only able to pick up roughly about 15 pounds. What's the difference? There exists incommensurability and a coherent mass within both of these, a geomagnetic precession of the atomic lattice work of the ferrite and of the neodymium iron boron is identical. The reason being is the nature of a ferrite or samarium cobalt differs from that of a neodymium iron boron. The charge is actually induced, there is a charge dropped when these are created. See, before this becomes a magnet, these are actually already um, centered. These are ceramic, by the way, okay? and then they're chrome plated and then they're turned into magnets. What do you think this is like before it becomes a damn magnet? What do you think this is like? It doesn't do anything. It does nothing. It ha it's exactly like the damn wax candle over here, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> this is a really powerful one too. It's like an N62 Gauss. Before this is turned into... this is What the hell do you think defines this word? Magnet. Well, a magnet is something that has two poles and it does... No! That's a description. That's not an explanation. What do you think defines a magnet? It's a coherent mass with incommensurability of its atomic structure, its lattice work. What's the difference between a can four ounce candle and a four ounce uh, neodymium iron board magnet? How is this able to, if it's able to induce field coherency in another piece of metal, for example, not dirt, not an orange, not a head of cabbage. I mean, it's not going to lift up 60 pounds of cabbage, is it? We're not talking about that. It's able to induce coherency in another object and able to lift up 60 pounds. This can only accelerate four ounces towards anything. Incoherent matter accelerates everything, obviously. Four ounces, four ounces. 60 pounds, four ounces. Laser, light bulb. Everything in the universe, as far as amazing inventions in the future, is going to be field coherency. I'm sorry if you have a hard time understanding incommensurability. I mean, the fact that I actually translate ancient Greek, and I have a mind of a Platonist, and nobody reads that crap anymore, you know, helps me a lot. It's not really that abstruse of a concept. People are like, what the hell is incommensurability? If you actually do a Google search on the word incommensurability, you come up with a bunch of uh, modern connotations of it. You would not come up with the original ancient Greek denotation of the term incommensurability. However, understanding magnetism and field coherence is absolutely impossible without understanding the word incommensurability. You'd have to go to some ancient Greek philosophical texts to actually find the original context of usage of this word, but it is indispensable for understanding magnetism. So, 60 pounds, 4 ounces, but they're both 4 ounces. There is no such thing as gravity. Absolutely no such goddamn thing as gravity. Weight is not weight. Well, what the hell do you mean weight is not weight? We'll get on to that in the next video. Weight is not weight. Weight is location specific. It is uh, medium specific, vector specific, magnitude specific, phase specific, and two other things. There's no such thing as weight. Okay? No such thing. There's no such thing as gravity either. If there's no such thing as weight, then we're able to extrapolate out other things. Now, if there's no such thing as weight, and since everything is a big E, electrical, actually everything is dielectric, electrical is just an extrapolation out of electrostatics or dielectricity. Since everything is electrical or dielectric, without getting into that long spiel of discussion, that means that you can make something have no weight. Correct? Correct. Right here I have a four ounce object. It's able to accelerate 60, uh, 60 pounds. 60 pounds from a 4 ounce object? Yes, that's undeniable. has to be something that is able to induce, this magnet has to be able to induce that level of field coherency, something metal, another magnet, so on and so forth. That is gravity. The only thing that differentiates about gravity from what you ignorantly and everybody else ignorantly calls magnetic acceleration is field coherence. If you like this video and drop me a buck or two, go on to the next video on weight. Um, if not, you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Thanks for watching. Okay? Bye.